Hey everybody, Chris Baker here from LuckyGunner.com. Two videos in one week. That almost never happens here. I wanted to post a quick follow-up to the video we published a few days ago called The Frustrating Search for a Double Action Carry Pistol. In that video, I attempted to respond to all of the many viewers who have asked for recommendations for a slim double action, single action, or double action only carry pistol, preferably in nine millimeter. A lot of you guys basically want a double action version of something like a single stack Smith & Wesson Shield or a one and a half stack SIG P365. I had to relate the sad news that nobody is currently making a viable option that really fits those criteria. The closest attempt is the Springfield XDE, but it's quite a bit larger than most other modern slim format carry pistols. Within just a couple of hours of posting that video, I was swimming in a sea of irritated comments from viewers wondering why I completely excluded car arms from this conversation. Their entire catalog is exclusively made up of slim, lightweight, double action carry pistols, but I did not mention them at all in that previous video. I am familiar with Cars pistols. I've even owned a couple of them personally, a CW9 and an MK9. And we have a couple here in our company's collection, including this CW380. The reason I did not include Cars in my discussion about double action carry pistols is because I don't really think of them as being truly double action. Now, the correct terminology is up for debate here, and I will talk about that more in just a minute. To me, double action usually implies a hammer-fired double action. All of Carr's pistols are striker-fired. In that last video, I briefly mentioned three major safety benefits of double action pistols. First, their triggers are heavier than most striker-fired pistols. Second, the trigger's length of travel is longer. And third, and the most important feature for me, is that you can pin the hammer with your thumb to effectively disable the gun when you are holstering or performing any other administrative task. Now, personally, I don't really consider those first two benefits to be absolutely essential if the gun's got a trigger pull that is reasonable and there is some way to momentarily disable the gun like pinning the hammer or a manual thumb safety or the striker control device for Glocks. If the gun doesn't have a feature like that, another alternative would be an extra long or extra heavy trigger like a double action only revolver with a shrouded hammer spur. Of those safety features, the only one car pistols kind of have is that the trigger's length of travel is a little longer than average for a striker fired pistol. It's about halfway between the travel of a Glock trigger and the double action on a Beretta. There is no hammer, there's no manual safety, or even an external striker indicator. The trigger weight is about six pounds, which is on par with most other striker fired pistols and lighter than the typical hammer fired double action. The car trigger press has a smooth feel with a nice rolling break, which is something I like about them. When you're actually shooting the gun, they feel familiar for those of us who are used to shooting double action hammer fired pistols, but in terms of actual safety features, a car has a lot more in common with a Glock or an M&P or other striker fired design than it does with a typical hammer fired double action. Now I'm not trying to convince anyone that cars pistols are bad or inherently unsafe. We all have different standards for what we consider to be safe enough for carry. There is no one right answer. The car's longer trigger pull might provide a slightly wider margin of safety than other striker fired pistols. And if that's what you're comfortable with, then a car might be a good option for you. But if someone tells me that they're looking for a double action pistol, I've found it's usually safe to assume they're talking about a hammer fired double action. Now, at this point, I am sure some of you are thoroughly confused as to what the term double action even means. That's not your fault. It's just confusing. It used to be that nearly all semi-automatic pistols had hammers. Distinguishing the different action types was fairly straightforward. There were single action pistols like the 1911 that only fire if the hammer is cocked. Pressing the trigger 
performs the single action of releasing the hammer. When the slide cycles, it cocks the hammer again, so every shot is single action. Then there were double action, single action pistols. And those are also known today as traditional double action. For the first shot, the hammer starts in the lowered position. The long and heavy trigger press performs the two actions of cocking and releasing the hammer. When the slide retracts, it cocks the hammer for the next shot, which means every shot after the first is single action. Less common were double action only pistols. Those start with the hammer down and then the slide cycles, but it does not cock the hammer. So every shot is double action. For the most part, semi-autos in the 20th century fit into one of those three neat little categories. And then along came the Glock 17 to disrupt the whole industry. It was not the first striker fired pistol by any means, but it was the first one to have massive commercial success. Glocks don't have a hammer, so there's no obvious way to determine if it's single action or double action. Glock calls it a safe action, which works well as a marketing term, but it doesn't really mean anything. A striker is essentially a firing pin and a hammer fired pistol. The hammer hits the firing pin, which then hits the uh, primer in the cartridge. Striker fired pistols have a spring like this one that acts on the firing pin itself cocking it and then releasing it. On a pistol like the Springfield XD, the gun starts off with the striker almost completely cocked. So when you press the trigger, you're really just releasing the striker. It's very similar to a single action hammer fired pistol. In other designs like car arms pistols, the striker starts out with barely any tension on it. As you press the trigger, it cocks the striker and then releases it very similar to a hammer fired double action only. The striker in Glocks and several other pistol designs start out somewhere in between those two extremes. The striker is at least partially cocked by the movement of the slide, but when you press the trigger, you're cocking it the rest of the way and it releases. So what do we call those? Nobody really can decide. Sometimes the manufacturer will just make something up like safe action and kind of hope that we all go along with it. And then to further complicate matters, most striker fired pistols have internal firing pin blocks and other safety mechanisms that impact the feel of the trigger press. So even if a gun company says their striker fired pistol is single action or double action, that doesn't mean the trigger will even remotely resemble what you would expect if it was a hammer fired pistol. So in general, I try not to use the terms double action or single action when I'm talking about striker fired pistols because it just raises more questions than it answers. In my discussions about double action pistols, I usually make an effort to specify that I mean hammer fire double actions, but that just gets really tedious to say every time, so I don't always do that. If there is a striker fired design that could be considered double action, it probably is car arms and CARS marketing materials do refer to their pistols as double action only. So I understand why some people might expect them to be included in a discussion about double actions. From my perspective, I kind of feel like I'm trying to talk about pickup trucks and people are upset that I didn't include the Chevy El Camino. Yes, it has four wheels and a cargo bed, but it's missing all the other features we expect a pickup to have. So it wouldn't even occur to me to include it. So I hope that clears things up a little. I will try to use more specific terminology in the future to avoid confusion. In the meantime, I got me a car. It's as big as a whale and we're heading on down to buy some ammo with lightning fast shipping from luckygunner.com.